Hello, this is um, the Lord's Prayer Ministries. My name is Sharita. I'm so happy to have you um, watch today. Today we'll be talking about self-care. So um, I don't want to be too formal, but just wanted you to understand that, um, you know, there is such thing as biblical self-care because I know um, a lot of times in the body of Christ, we can question whether or not self-care is biblical. So I um, just wanted to share some things with you. And um, first of all, let's open up in prayer. Hallelujah, Lord God, we just thank you for today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are so good, Lord God. And I just pray right now, Lord God, that you just um, help me share with the woman on this channel what it means to have self-care. Lord God, what does it mean to take care of ourselves, Lord God? We just ask for your wisdom in this area, Lord God. Hallelujah. Help us to do things according to your will for our lives. And we thank you for it. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, first of all, you know, the question comes up, is self-care biblical? And um, I want to go ahead and dive into this from a biblical perspective. So the first thing, though, when you're talking about self-care, what is self-care? What does this mean? And according to Oxford Dictionary, self-care is a practice of taking action to preserve or improve one's own health and the practice of taking an active role in protecting one's own well-being. What is the difference between, you know, worldly and biblical self-care? And I think that is the main question because as we're thinking of self-care, you know, the dictionary version, it doesn't sound like things that are unbiblical or wicked. You know, it's basically taking care of yourself to pr preserve your energy. And so where do we fit in in the body of Christ? Where do we draw this self-care from is the question. And so um, the difference between biblical versus um, worldly self-care will really help us to identify that. So the first thing is worldly self-care. So um, finds his rest independent of Jesus. The goal is comfort and pleasure, and it's rooted in self-indulgence, vanity, and pride. And it will never truly satisfy and fulfill you. Self-care at worldly perspective is something that you're removing Jesus out of and you're replacing it with something else. So for example, you know, there's nothing wrong with going to have a pedicure or a spa day, but there's nothing necessarily inerrant or wrong about that, according to what the word of God says. But there is something wrong with doing that outside of how God has designed it for. So if it's to, you know, I'm taking care of myself and I'm not going to worry about anything. I'm pulling away from everything. And we're spending all our day indulging and in chocolate and strawberries and manicures and spa pedicures then is that something that is godly? Is that something that God wants us to do? The thing about it is shifting our focus. No, there's nothing wrong with the manicure and pedicure. I get manicures and manicures and pedicures sometimes. But am I making that the center of my self-care? Am I making it the center of preserving my own improvement and health? And so biblical self-care, it finds rest in Jesus. Okay, so again, worldly self-care, you find rest independent of Jesus. So you can, you know, go to Morocco, wherever, you know, and find rest. But if it's outside of Jesus, is that, as a Christian, how God would want your self-care to be? And so finding rest in Jesus, the goal is worship and submission to God. That should be the goal of biblical self-care. Submission and worship. And again, the opposite of that would be comfort and pleasure. Are we, when we say we need to take a break from things, are we drowning ourselves in comfort of ice cream or are we drowning ourselves in the word of God? And so, um, and another example of biblical self-care is an act of stewardship. Are you being a good steward of your body? Or are you going to take this whole tub of donuts and just sit and eat and indulge and watch 
movies that do not glorify God, that has cuss words that uses God's name in vain. Whereas the worldly self-care is rooted in self-indulgence, vanity, and pride. We're always focused on ourselves and the worldly view of self-care, where when we are biblical self-care, we're submitting unto the Lord and what he has us to do. And worldly self-care, it will never truly satisfy and fulfill you. Knowing that that void, that gap you have in the worldly self-care, it will never satisfy. It's, it's going to be a void that only God can fill. So with biblical self-care, it sustains us as a well that never runs dry. And so knowing the differences between biblical versus worldly self-care is the first start into understanding that self-care is something biblical, but it's how you utilize that self-care that makes a difference. So what does the Bible say about self-care? 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you know you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? 1 Corinthians 6 verses 19 to 20 says, Do you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were brought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. And yes, this was talking about sexual morality, but we can shift it into just in general, knowing that we are God's temple and the Holy Spirit resides in us. Mark 1 verses 35 says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there he prayed. Do you know that Jesus had to, you know, go to a solitary place? He would often go, you know, up into the mountain to just spend time with the Father. Even when, um, you know, that time before he was going to be, you know, um, betrayed, he went into the Garden of Kissimmee and he prayed to, to God the Father to the point where he was sweating bullets. He was in agony and he used that time though to draw near to the Father. So it's not a saying that you have to do this at a specific time. It's all the time we should be praying. All the time we should be drawing nigh to God. And it says draw nigh to him and he will draw nigh to us. So just keeping these some of these scripture verses, some of these examples um as kind of that tool that 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 guide to um help you understand that self-care is biblical and it's very important for us so i wanted to share with you some tips on biblical self-care and um you know if you have a pen and paper or if you want to go ahead and grab some do so so right now so here are a few tips on biblical self-care and how to just go about doing that um, again, we're shifting our focus and we're relying on Jesus. We're relying on the Holy Spirit. So the first is make sure you have time for God. Make sure you have some time for God. Whether it's 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night, 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at night, an hour in the morning, an hour at night, 30 minutes in, um, in the day. However you want to do, you want to focus on the qu quality over quantity. You want to make sure that you're shifting your time, however that may be. If it has to be three o'clock in the morning because you're so busy, you have your babies. I know people have children. Make time, make a room for the Lord because he's the one who provides. He's the one that gives you that energy. He's the one that fills you up with the Holy Spirit. So it's so important to make that time for God. So the next is practice journaling. I know a lot of you may not be writers, may not like writing, but what, however you want to do this, practice journaling, practice writing these things down, writing how you're feeling at the moment down and submitting unto God. Practice praying prayers as a letter to God in a journal or notebook. Forgive others. That is the next tip on biblical self-care. Do you know that unforgiveness can cause things not only spiritually, mentally, emotionally, but also physically. There are studies that say that unforgiveness can lead to cardiovascular disease, such as high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Um, so it's so important to realize that you have to release that unforgiveness in your heart toward anyone. It doesn't matter who they are, what they did, release it to God, because that is going to 
that harbor of unforgiveness is only hurting you. The next is rest. And so rest is an acronym for release everything, stop trying. And so this type of self-care is what God has showed me um, about my own life and my own self. I was always trying to do things in my own effort and God had to tell me to rest. And ironically, this was around the time of COVID happening. So 2020, early 2020, where God was telling me to stop trying, Sharita. Do things according to how I tell you to do it or how, when I tell you to do it. The next is nourish and exercise your body. Okay. So yes, we're talking about the spiritual, but do you know that the physical is of some importance? It says the spiritual is more important, but there is some importance for your physical man. And that means nourishing and exercising, um, eating healthy, drinking plenty of water. I'm always trying to find ways to drink water. And I know that we can get so busy with things in life. I know sometimes where I'm at work and I'm just trying to like, I have that bottle of water right in front of me, but I'm just not drinking it. So being intentional about drinking water, eating healthy, exercising. And I realized that when I learned to just exercise and eat healthy, that that was, first of all, just what all already was happening on the inner side. God was trans is transforming me and he's teaching me new things all the time. But he's also convicting me like, okay, if you call yourself a follower of me, how are you poisoning yourself with all this sugar, all these things that are unhealthy for you? Um, you know, we, we talk about abuse to others. We should not abuse our own selves because do you know that we are God's temple? And so we should be treating this body that has the Holy Spirit residing in, um, in it healthy as possible as the Lord leads. Not overdoing it, but doing it in moderation. Choose joy. <laughs> and so this is one thing that is very important with your mindset. It, the Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against spirits and principalities and evilness and wickedness in high places. And so choose joy because the enemy is going to attack. He's going, he's, he's looking for those who are weak and feeble, who are maybe lone um, survivors out there. And he's ready to trample. He's ready to steal. He's ready to kill and he's ready to destroy. So choose joy, choose Jesus today. And regardless of what circumstance, and I know sometimes it could be so hard to choose joy, but in your mind, have your mind made up that I choose joy today, no matter my circumstance, serve others. So this is the next um, tip on biblical self-care, serving others. Um, yeah, just learning to serve. How can I be of help to someone else? Instead of focusing on yourself and your own situation. And when you do this, it shifts your focus off of you and onto others. And as you serve others, you're learning on how God wanted us to be a servant because he was the ultimate servant. Sleep well. So this is one I think all of us adults are probably difficult and challenging and doing this is sleeping well. Um, it's recommended to get about seven to eight hours of sleep. And, you know, God created sleep for a reason. We need sleep for our brain, our body, um, our mental state. And it's not just a light sleep. It's getting into that REMS, that really deep sleep so that you can, your cells can rejuvenate and all of those things. So I just encourage you, um, sleeping well, drinking water, all those things kind of go hand in hand. But, you know, you're not invincible. If, if you don't sleep, you know, it's going to wreak havoc on your body and your mental state. So I encourage you to sleep well. Be in community. So this is the next tip, um, being in community. The Bible says to not forsake the assembling of believers, especially since the day of his return is drawing near. Do you know that Jesus is soon to return? He is going to be coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. And it's important for us to be in community with other brothers and sisters in Christ. And that will help to encourage and give accountability for our own self-care get rest. <laughs> and I already said sleep well, but get rest, resting, taking it easy, um, meditating on the word of God during that time, praying during that time. But you want to make sure that you're getting rest. Practice gratitude. And I think this 
goes hand in hand with choosing joy. So I just want to encourage you to practice gratitude. Be grateful of the little things. Be grateful that you have a family. Be grateful that you are alive and well and you have a roof over your head. Be grateful that you have a job and a car. So these are just some small things because the enemy wants us to complain about things. He wants us to be ungrateful, but be grateful and give that great gratefulness ultimately up to God. Be prayerful. So the Bible says to pray without ceasing. And so just want to encourage you all, pray, pray, get up in the morning to pray, get up in the evening to pray, make sure that you're seeking God, communicating with him, stop controlling. <laughs> this is something that is so difficult for me and God is so gracious to me with this. So um, stop trying to control everything, give it to God. And you know that when you give it to him, he does exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or imagine. Think lovely thoughts. So the Bible says to focus on things that are true, that are noble, that are of good report. And it says to meditate on these things. So I encourage you, instead of watching the news, instead of watching social media and what's going on in the world and all the crazy things, take some time to shift your focus off of those things and onto the word of God and think and meditate on his word. Study God's word. So there's a difference between reading and studying. And I just want to encourage you to do that. Something that I need to continue to work on is studying the word of God, really meditating on it day and night and understanding where is this word applying to my life. And something I like to do is called the SOAP method, which is scripture, observation, application, and prayer. So I usually do this like on a women's Bible study or thing or something. But, you know, if you're just a beginner in reading God's word, I would encourage you to use that in studying his word. After all these tips, I know it's a lot, but I want you to take some time and reflect. Jesus, what are you saying to me about self-care? And Jesus, what do you want me to do? And I just wanted you to take that time, you know, wherever you have, you can pause the video or we can just take this time after the video just to pray and ask God, what does he want you to do with self-care? Because I can give you these tips, but I don't know you like Jesus does. And I just encourage you to submit to him on how he wants you to have that self-care for yourself and what's best for you. So in conclusion, self-care should not be pursuit in pursuit of your own comfort and pleasure, but it should be an act of worship and submission unto God. Self-care is biblical, but only when done well by understanding that Christ cared for us first. And biblical self-care is not just for our own good, but so that we can care for others as Christ commanded us to do. I want to share this quote from Gospel Coalition. It's talking about seeing our heart. And it says that I used to believe Self-denial is mostly about behavior rather than the heart. For a long time, I thought self-denial is about avoiding practices I consider self-indulgent. But as I began to re-examine God's word, I started to see more cl clearly that self-denial isn't just a behavior itch issue. It's a heart issue. Our behavior reveals our heart. God calls us to deny our hopeless attempts to justify ourselves and find life apart from Christ. I avoided self-care because it looked dangerously close to self-indulgence, but avoiding self-care actually fed my sinful appetite to live self-sufficiently and to seek fulfillment in my own abilities. It may seem backward to say that avoiding self-care was actually self-indulgent, but it was for me. As I struggled with thinking that my accomplishments defined me, God taught me that self-denial for me meant stopping to rest. This lesson felt counterintuitive. But just because something looks like self-denial on the surface doesn't mean it actually is. So I just want to encourage you with that because basically, you know, we have a buyer Christ that kind of thinks of self-care as like, you know, no, that's not of God. And a lot of us is just we're go, go, go. And we're never stopping to take time and take that rest. And so I just really want to encourage you, do as the Holy Spirit is leading you. If he's wanting you to take that alone time and go into the mountain and pray, do that. If he's telling you to go and preach the gospel or go to, you know, Zimbabwe to be a, a missionary, do that. But just do it into act of worship and submission to God. Do it. 
for the glory of God as he is leading you to do. And so encourage you all. Pray you all have a blessed day. We'll talk soon. God bless.